Hey, I want to thank you for joining me for Tea Time today. Um, I hope everybody is having an awesome day. Um, today, I want to talk to you about programming. Um, I know people are probably like, okay, so what's programming? Well, programming, what I like to refer to it is how we as adults make certain decisions, how we view certain things, um, why we think certain things, how we act the way we act. Um, so yeah, you guys get the picture. You get, you get the picture. Um, the programming starts with our parents. You know, when we come into the world, everything that we know, everything that, you know, we experience is through the lenses of our parents. And then from our parents, we go to school. And from grade school to middle school to high school, we have the influence of friends and our peers. And then if we get a job, we have those experiences as well and so but now <laughs> that's that's just my experience growing up <laughs> but now um you have a whole nother factor which is social media and that's huge <laughs> um i do i really feel that social media actually impacts people more so than their families and their you know friends you know everything Everybody wants to get likes. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody, you know, it, it's just a vicious cycle. So programming doesn't necessarily mean it's a good or bad thing. Um, but it is. It's how we perceive people. That's where, you know, a lot of people um, come up with their different prejudices, Um you know, whether it's against people of color, whether it's against women, whether it's against anything, you know, a lot of that is the programming that the people received as children. So how do you change this programming? You know, once you become an adult and you're able to make your own decisions um, and you decide that you want to do something different, how do you start? Um, so just a couple quick, easy strategies is, you know, you figure out what you want to change. You figure out what view that you have that doesn't necessarily agree with what, what you may have once believed. And when you do that, that's where you know where you can begin to change. For instance, um, I'm going to use myself as an example. You know, coming up, there wasn't a lot of opportunities for women and especially women of color. So, you know, looking at TV and things like that, looking at magazines, things like that, you know, I didn't see people that look like me. Um, I didn't see people that were, you know, having similar experiences that I had. So, I didn't actually look at the different possibilities that were actually out there for me. I just, you know, looked at my immediate environment and just drew from there. Um, thankfully, I did. I had a father that told me I could do anything that I wanted to do. I could be anything that I wanted to be. And so it did. It actually, you know, helped me look past that just because the people didn't look like me. You know, if I did see a woman or, you know, even some men, I would be like, OK, you know, I want to do that. And from a very young age, I, I always pictured myself wearing a black suit and carrying a briefcase and working for the government because I did. I had a, a grandmother that worked in government. So I, I guess, you know, just having that did, you know, at least I knew that was a possibility. So, um, of course, growing up, you know, going through school, you had some teachers that poured into you and then you had some teachers that, you know, would try to limit what you what you thought or what you believed. And, you know, 
that's sad because that that's still actually going on. Um, I was watching a program the other day and a young lady was saying how one of her teachers told her, oh, well, you shouldn't want to do that career because, you know, you, you won't be able to. And for someone in that authority to try to dampen the dreams of a young person, it did, it, it, it kind of made me feel some type of way. And, and it's sad that that's still going on today because now women, girls, whatever, we have more opportunities and more possibilities than any time in history thus far. So hopefully it will just continue to grow even better as you know time passes. So for all you people out there with daughters, you know, even if you your dreams weren't able to come true because of different circumstances, you know, and just a different time, just pour life into them. Let them know that they can do anything that they set their minds to. And, you know, and tell them that you're proud of them for even, you know, thinking that way. And, you know, try to teach them that they don't have to conform to what society says that they have to be and what they have to do, that they can do anything that they want to do. And it's okay for them to try a variety of things. Um, I was sharing with one of my friends that coming up, I played all kind of musical instruments because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And, you know, but being able to have that opportunity to try different things, you know, it was, it's for me, you know, I look back now, that was actually a blessing because you won't know what you like until you actually try some different things. And so, you know, just having that opportunity is huge. Um, I played drums, I played clarinet, I played the guitar, I played, well, I tried to play the flute. Um, that didn't work out too well. So <laughs> um, we, we tried trumpet, <laughs> that was too noisy. I didn't like it because of the noise. Um, I even tried trombone. I played bass guitar. <laughs> so, you know, yes, I, I tried a lot. And um, after doing all that, though, my favorite did end up being the drums. I forgot to silence my phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but anyway, you guys get what I'm saying. So, yes, Pour into our young ladies. Let them know, like, even, even if you are in a single parent household, try to teach them that they don't have to go looking for love from men. And, you know, to find out who they are as individuals. And, you know, it's okay not to be in a relationship early. It's okay to pursue your dreams. It's okay to go outside of the norm. Um, but like I say, social media plays such a huge factor with people and, and sometimes not in a positive way. It's usually in a negative way. They're getting their body images from images where people have had cosmetic surgery, implants, you know, all these things that could actually kill you, you know, if, if done incorrectly. Um, I was watching a program the other day and Kay Michelle was sharing her story of how she just she went and had some things done because she just thought it was part of being in the industry and a lot of people in the industry were doing it but hers almost killed her and you know so that's why too you know i'm trying to use my platform so people will learn to love themselves for themselves it's like you know Everybody's body is not the same. Everybody is not meant to look like everybody else. We're all uniquely made and we all have our own special gifts. And just being able to tap into those gifts is, you know, another thing that makes us unique because a lot of people have gifts, but they don't want to share them because they're usually because of fear, because people can be cruel and even with me, you know, deciding to do this, you know, people may or may not have been supportive of it, but at the end of the day, 
it's something that I wanted to do. It's something that I wanted to try. It's something that I wanted to push myself out of my comfort zone and try something different. And in the same sense, I want to be able to help people. Um, I want to be able to give people somewhere to go, someone to talk to, and a platform just to, you know, get little simple everyday questions answered that, you know, they might not be able to find the information. Um, whatever the case may be, my platform is here. And so that's one of the things like, you know, even with the, the programming piece, I want to deprogram people so they know they don't have to just settle for what's going on with them in their lives right now. You don't have to just settle for anything. You can be the change that you want to see happen. And if you don't know how to start or where to start, that's when you seek help. Because there's, there's plenty of people out there, whether it's, you know, an actual professional or, like I say, my platform is free. So, you know, we can have um, conversations. We can have uh, individual sessions, which, you know, if you're interested, we can talk about that offline. Because I do. I meet with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, because I know everyone doesn't want to share, you know, all their information in a group setting, and that's okay. Even though this is a safe space, I can't guarantee it's a safe space if other people are on here, even though they, you know, agree to the agreement to actually join. So with that, you know, if you do want more information or if you are interested in individualized sessions, just shoot me a message in Messenger and we can go from there. But um, a lot of people have negative self-talk from their programming. Um, and I do, I want to ask you, what does your negative self-talk say to you? Does it say I'm not pretty enough? Does it say I'm not smart enough? Does it say I'm not lovable? Does it say I'm not trusting? You know, what does it say for you? And once you identify some of your negative self-talk, I want you to think about where did it come from? You know, some people, it came from their parents. Some people's parents told them they were dumb, they were stupid, they wished they were never born and things like that. And so, of course, if the people that you love are saying these things to you and the people that are supposed to love you unconditionally are saying these things to you, yes, it is going to impact your self-esteem. Yes, it is going to impact how you grow up in life and the choices that you make in life. Um, and it, but even though that may be the case and there is that impact, again, once we become adults, we have the ability to make different statements about ourselves. So, um, and that's one of the ways that you change that negative self-talk. And um, one of the sessions we had before, um, I had told some of the members to do, do a mirror exercise where they actually look in the mirror and, you know, just tell themselves that they love themselves. And I did, I got some feedback from there and some people, you know, had a very difficult time doing that. And, and so it is, it's getting back to the root of the matter of, you know, why. Why do you have a hard time telling yourself positive things? And chances, chances are it's because all those things that the people said about you over time, you actually started to believe. And over time, what those people said identified who you are. And over time, as you believed it, your life, began to look like you believed it. So I do, I want to encourage you today. I'm, I'm not going to say challenge because things can be challenging enough, but I want to encourage you to change the narrative, change all those negative things that you might've thought because of what someone else said, um, or you look in the mirror and you say them to yourself. I want you to think of the, the positive things that can come out of those negative things. And even if it is something that you want to change about yourself, um, for whatever reason, you know, 
um, and I am, I'm going to use weight, for instance. If, if you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see as far as your weight, you still be gentle to yourself, but encourage yourself and, you know, take some steps to make some changes. And it is a small steps. You don't have to go out and buy a gym membership. You don't have to do anything that, you know, might cause your situation to, you know, get worse. If, you know, if you're already having like financial issues, things like that, especially in this economy, or, you know, every day you're hearing about things and prices going up, up, up. So um, start where you are. That's the thing. That's the thing in anything. Start where you are. If it's your environment, okay, your house might be cluttered or your room might be junky or you got too much stuff on your vanity in your bathroom. Start there. Make a decision that you don't want your vanity to look like that anymore. And you can't, like, I, I'm a list maker. I'll write lists. I got books. I got notebooks with, you know, my things to do, things to do. And and so I will. I'll just, like, go to it. And, you know, on a day where I, I don't really have much going on, you know, I will. I'll start cleaning off my counter. Because I don't know how or why, but everything ends up on my counter. Um, <laughs> and it's usually mail, you know. So I'll just, I'll do it. I'll take 10, 15 minutes, do it and get it done. And it's like, okay, that's one thing checked off. So, you know, again, these are just little tips that I use. These are things that, you know, help me on my journey because, you know, even for me, every day is a journey. Um, every day, you know, I have to make a decision of whether I'm going to get out of bed or not, whether I'm going to have a good day or not. And every day, the choice is yours, whether you're going to be happy or not, whether you're going to be sad or not, whether you're going to, you know, just let, let life continue to pass you by or not. You know, every day you wake up, th those are choices that you have to make. And if you wake up, you have the ability to make better choices than you did the day before. So... Be, be kind to yourself and don't beat yourself up about, you know, things that may have happened in your past. Like, you know, one of the sayings that I like is when you know better, you do better. And I really feel with the more information that people obtain and the more knowledge they get, they can make better choices. Um, they can do better things in life. So it is, it's just, you know, taking the time to actually learn something. You're never too old to learn. You know, life itself every day is a new learning opportunity, a new um, new experience. So again, the choice is yours. So you do, you just decide what you wanna do. You decide what programming you've had that you wanna change. Um, and don't be driven by fear. Change is going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> Especially if it's things like, you know, if you're over, over 50, <laughs> that's a lot of years of programming. <laughs> so, you know, don't expect it to happen overnight. But, but again, be kind to yourself. Confront the issues and embrace it to make change. So it's like, yeah, um, confront it. If you don't like it, Make a plan to change it. And as you're changing it, embrace it. Embrace the newness that's coming out of it. And embrace the, the whole newness of just, you know, new opportunities for you, a new way of being, a new way of doing, a new way of thinking, a new way of looking. You know, it's an opportunity for you to find out who you really are. You know, outside of all the programming of being a daughter, being a mother, being a sister, being an auntie, being an employee, who are you? What makes you you outside of all of that? You know, a lot of people go 
a little crazy if they lose jobs and things like that because they let those avenues define who they are. And so once that is gone, they don't know who they are. And that's kind of sad. You know, I understand that, you know, we have to work and, you know, have an income and things in order to live. But life is about balance. You know, who are you when you're not at work? What do you like to do outside of work? Do you have any hobbies? Do you have any interests? You know, think about those kind of things. Those are the kind of things that, you know, once you get to the point where you're not working, that's what you go back to. But you don't just start then, you know, you, you can at least identify some things that you do like. And, you know, as time permits, you know, some people I know have families and things like that and other obligations outside of work. But you still have to take time for you. You still have to take time for things that you enjoy. You still have to take, again, going back to self-care, self-care of yourself. Because as you care for yourself, that allows you to be able to be there for others even better. But you got to start at home. You got to take care of you first. Like they say on the airplanes, you know, with the whole oxygen mask thing. Place your mask on your face before helping others. Take care of yourself before helping others. Because if you're no good, you're not going to be any good to anyone else. And again, I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight, but it can happen. And I am. I, I hope this information has blessed you guys. And I do, I just want to end on, don't make your future pay for your past. Because your future can be bright, it can be whatever you choose to make it. But it'll never happen if you're standing in the past and blaming the past for everything and all the shortcomings and, you know, not wanting to get past that. Get past your past so your future doesn't have to pay for it. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for joining me. And this is your girl, MJ, out for now. Have a good one.